Welcome to this episode of Weld.com. My name is Adam Stretch. I'm the program coordinator and one of the welding instructors here at Pellissippi State Community College and one of the educational content creators here at Weld.com. Today we're going to talk about ovens. So we've got some 7018s here. And we got to talk about how to properly store these and why it's important to keep it in an oven. Not a pizza oven. This one's way better. Today we've got the Phoenix 300. We're going to open this box. Let's take a look at what's inside. Take a look at that beauty right there. This is the Phoenix Rod Ovens 300. This is a 300, meaning it'll hold 300 pounds of electrodes in this beautiful cylinder. All right, let's get in here and take a look at some of the features, and then we'll talk about why you might want to be using a rod oven. As we take a look at this Phoenix Dry Rod 300, I misspoke earlier. This is actually capable of 400 pounds of electrodes. From the outside, we've got a nice adjustable handle, which actually has a locking mechanism right here. If you needed to, you can lock this. If you're on a job site that's requiring code quality work and you don't want random people to, I don't know, throw their lunch in here to warm it up, you can actually lock this mechanism so that the latch will not open. Keeps the rods protected, stops anybody from messing around with it that shouldn't be. We've got the, uh, the logo. We also have a thermostat up here. There's a pyrometer on the inside of this door. So with a quick glance, we can actually see the temperature inside the rod oven. Um, this is actually adjustable from uh, 100 to 550 degrees. There are the therm adjustable thermostat in the back back here. I'll show you guys that in just a second. There's also a adjustable eye in case you needed to get inside with a separate pyrometer to check internal temperature. So from the outside, we can go ahead and open the door. Latch just pulls open. Nice latching mechanism here. Close the door. Latch is solid. The nice part is this is adjustable. As it wears in over time, you can make those adjustments. You can also buy easy to get replacement parts should that get damaged. It's easy to just call them up. Go online, order some new parts. You open the door. You've got that pyrometer, like I said, that thermal couple is gonna be here, which is telling us what the internal temperature is right here measured inside the rod oven. You can see inside we've got large capacity. A 50 pound box of electrodes will slide right inside of there. Oh, looks like we got an owner's manual. Go ahead and check that out. The heating element is down here. It's protected from the outside and you have different sized openings. Now I know the ones that I normally run at school will run like 332 electrodes on one side, eighth inch on the other, some 532s on top, maybe a couple of 316s and quarter inch. And then we use this inside in the middle just for those, um, you know, those stubs where you've, you've not burnt the entire rod yet. Maybe not something I'm going to light up for a test, but if we're just doing practicing, running some, some beads, we can, we can keep those right here in the middle. So you do have that owner's manual here. Uh, it's going to give you a lot of the information should you have any questions. One of the big questions is this is actually available in a 120 or 240 volt power. I'll show you the back side. We opted for the 120 volt. I uh, didn't want to tie up any of the 240 wall plugs. So we're just going to use one of the standard 120 wall plugs. Keep this thing powered up. Um, does come up with stackable legs. Your warranty card. Make sure you go ahead and fill that out. That way if you've got any questions or anything goes wrong, they know exactly who owns what and how to get it taken care of for you. Your certificate of conformance, meaning that this has been tested and is ready to go. How to adjust the thermostat stem adjustments, uh, information on keeping the rods at temperature. This actually has your parts list. Okay, so we'll take a look at this. 
These are all the easily and affordably purchased replacement parts should anything wear out or get damaged. Now the nice part is these things have been around for years. They've been making them and those parts are readily available versus some of the um, those import versions that, you know, if something breaks, you're going to have to go over to the hardware store and cobble a hinge back together and, and hope you can make it work. And they're really kind of designed to be disposable. Phoenix does an amazing job of making a high quality American made product with parts that are available to replace should anything go wrong or wear out just simply with use. All right, let's spin this thing around, take a look at the back side. The thermostat is right up here. That thermostat goes from zero, well, when you turn it on, it's coming on at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will go all the way up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in general, we're not gonna store rods at that 550 degree temperature. That's gonna be outside of the, the standard storage range for things like your low hydrogen 7018s and such. However, you might need to go up to that 550 range depending on the electrode you're using if you needed to do what's called a rebake. And that's where your rods have been out of the oven for an extended period of time, typically over four hours, but different rods have different uh, restrictions as to how long they can be out of the oven based on the code that you're welding to. Now, if they have been out of the oven, we're gonna use a 7018, which is, many of you are familiar with the standard 7018. If that's been out of an oven for, let's say, over four hours, okay, it might need to go back in for a rebake, and typically you're only allowed to rebake your rods one time before they're considered uh, no longer in compliance. So this is a very solid feel feeling rheostat, and you get audible click when you turn it on to the, the 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, one thing that I personally really like about this rheostat is that it's recessed into this pocket in the back. We actually burned up at school one of the other cheaper brands. The parts are hard to get if available at all. And it was because the rheostat dial is actually mounted on the side of the machine. Well, it's very accessible. One student ended up accidentally or purposely turning it up and left it all summer long. While we, were, while we were out for break, it ended up burning up um, about 500 pounds worth of electrodes and the oven. So that was a, a very expensive boo-boo. Uh, storing rods at that temperature for an extended period of time actually caused the flux to degrade and burned up the oven. So we're going to use this uh, 300 here as a replacement for that. All right, let's take a look at why are we going to store rods in an oven? What, what's up with this oven? Why is this important? Let's take a better look at that now. Why are we putting electrodes in ovens and which electrodes are we putting in an oven? Okay. Most commonly, you guys are familiar with 7018s. As we look at this, we've got low hydrogen rods. Our low hydrogen rods are going to be um, AWS, A5.1, SMAW, things like our E, XX15, XX16, XX18, or XX28s. Something like a 7016 or maybe an 8016, 9016, that's going to be very common for uh, moving into the pipe applications with open root where we're not putting in the 6010 or 8010 root. We're going to be looking more at like the uh, the 7018s that everybody's familiar with. You know, these happen to be Lincoln Excaliburs. They say E7018 H4R on them. And the H4R, that's going to be 70,000 tensile strength, all position. The 8 is the composition of this. That H4 is the hydrogen designator. And that means that while the rod is capable of being out of the oven for longer periods of time, the code book, if you're doing code quality work, specifies how long these rods can be out of the oven. I know some of the companies right now have got rods that are designed to be out of the oven for up to like 96 hours, which is fantastic. However, that doesn't meet the code. Now, there's some rods that 
we're probably not going to keep in a rod oven. If, uh, if all you were running was, let's say, 6010s or 6011s, 6013s, something along that line, you're probably not going to be keeping those in an oven, although that's not to say you could not. If you kept it in a rod oven at around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, just a, just a constant 100 degrees, that low setting, okay, that will help with arc initiation. However, a lot of these rods, you know, like 6010s, right? These require a small amount of hydrogen, you know, at atmosphere type hydrogen, moisture, if you will, to be in the rod, in the flux, for it to properly function. If you take 6010s and put them in an oven at 300 degrees and leave them in there, and you go to light up on them, you'll find that the, the, the rods, well, they'll be a little bit easier to light up, if you stick it at all, this will, all the flux will turn a, a, like a brownish, brownish burnt color. And if you stick the rod at all, the entire thing lights up, glows, and falls apart. And the flux actually starts falling off and you'll end up with some, some toenailing issues there. The same thing happens with the toenailing if you take those 7018s and you don't keep them in the oven though. So we talk about these 7018s. 15, 16, 18, 28, being a low hydrogen rod. Well, what does that mean? What is hydrogen? Let's take a look at the periodic table of elements here. As you can see, hydrogen is up here in the top corner. If we look at atomic sizes, hydrogen is the smallest molecule. What does that mean for us as welders? Well, hydrogen is what's going to cause heat affected zone or has cracking is the hydrogen tries to escape. That's also referred to as under bead cracking. And the problem with that is it's under bead, which means we can't see it. So it actually propagates out after it cools as the hydrogen tries to escape. That's a bad thing in structures to have cracking underneath our welds. Things start falling apart. And that's why code books require those rods be kept in an oven. We've got some different parameters for different rods let's take a look at what some of those are and how they are applied. All right, we're talking about different rods and which rods you would keep in the rod oven. Phoenix makes this really handy little chart. This gives you some rough estimates based on the electrodes and that the dry rod oven holding temperatures, where you would set the dial on the back, based on the electrode types and all those 6010, 6011s, 100 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Again, it's not keeping it out in atmosphere, but it's keeping it in the oven. Those 7018s, that's going to be more like 250 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to be a pretty common for both their settings and their settings where you'd want to keep those electrodes stored at. And then there's a duration of time that it can be out of the oven. And that's because they absorb humidity. I mean, based on the relative humidity, there's a cute little chart down here in the bottom, um, within two hours at 80% relative humidity, rods may contain up to 13 times the allowable limit. That's why some of our rods, like the, the higher tensile strength 110, 120, 18 type, those can only be out of the rod oven for a half hour, based on code books, which is a very short time before you need to get it back in the rod oven. So you wouldn't want to take a a giant handful out of the oven, then go climb a building to weld with them. If you're doing something where you've got to travel, maybe, maybe a larger rod oven like this is not the best choice. If you're stocking a shop full of guys that are doing a lot of stick welding, you know, this is a 400, but they also have one that's, uh, I believe, a, a 900, or it's capable of holding 1,100 pounds of electrode. It's a much larger oven. You can get one of these that'll double stack, so you have to order it where it'll have a second set of feet on it up here. So you could stack two of these on top of one another, keep your rods organized, different rod ovens. <clears throat> but a lot of you, this might be too big for your application. So you still should be keeping your rods in a rod oven. They make 10 pound, 20 pound, 50 pound, and 150 pound ovens. So they're much smaller. Something like a 10 pound oven is, is gonna look a lot like this 50 pound box of electrodes with a handle on it. Little 110 plug makes it very convenient to keep those rods in the oven and take it to a job set with you 
whether it's up on a building or off the back of your rig truck, you can plug that in and run it right off the generator, making sure that your rods are ready to go when you need them. The 50 pound is gonna be a little more capable if you wanted to keep, let's say, 332 um, 8th inch and 532 with maybe a couple of 316s like in, the, in a small fab shop, right? If you needed to just keep those, you know, a small assortment of rods ready to rock and roll. You start getting into these, these larger sizes. It's more for large job sites, large manufacturers or educational facilities that are gonna <clears throat> need to store a lot of rods because, well, we burn through a lot of rods. So I got a little pro tip for you I'm gonna share. Let's take a look at this box of rods. We'll get this in the oven, we'll get set. All right, when it comes time to load up your rod oven, start putting this thing to use. Once you plug it in, get it up to temperature, you're gonna open the door, you're gonna grab your box of electrodes. In this case, we've got 50 pounds of 7018s, eighth inch. You're gonna slide those right in there, pop that top open, and you can go ahead and pull those rods out. Now sometimes, it'd be a little difficult to get in here get into a small opening and grab the rods so a lot of guys will use pliers then you get down here and you got a bunch of rods that are left in here but you you really can't get in there and get them out very well so i got a little tip to help you guys out all right here we are with that pro tip remember we're talking about those rods i'm gonna show you guys how to make your life just a little bit easier remember to stay safe when you're out in the shop put your safety glasses on We're going to just take this outside seam off of here. We're not trying to grind back into the container. And we know that the flux rods start here and work this way on the flux. And so these are the bare metal end is on this side. We're just going to go ahead and knock that off of here. Just like that, you just knock that seam off. Now you have access to all of your electrodes from top to bottom in a nice organized tray that still fits in your rod oven, but makes it a whole lot easier to get to those electrodes from the top down. For those of you interested in why you'd be keeping your electrodes in your rod oven. Bob Moffat, another one of the Weld.com hosts, did an excellent video showing the light up on 7018s when they've been kept in a rod oven, when they've not been kept in a rod oven. By keeping it in the rod oven, you get a smoother light up, you eliminate porosity on the start, and you have a smoother running bead that the slag chips off a whole lot easier. Sometimes it peels itself right off. If you don't keep your rods in the rod oven and you just leave them out, you end up with porosity on, the, on your arc initiation when you start. That's a discontinuity and sometimes a defect. Your slag, you really got to chip hard at it to get it to come off of there. And you know, they just don't run as well. Doesn't take much to store them properly. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Weld.com and our special on the Phoenix Dry Rod Rod Ovens. Remember, they are available in various sizes fit your needs. They're made right here in the US of A, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you want to keep your welds up to code, make sure you're storing your rods properly. Follow operating instructions. Thanks again for tuning in. We look forward to touching base with you on our app, on our various social media platforms. Feel free to ask any questions you've got or any follow-ups. Again, Take this new information, keep those rods protected, and go make some money.